this old guitar doing what I do. Neil decided his music wasn't talking loud enough about the oil sands, so he hitched his wagon to the Athabasca Chippewan First Nation Honor the Treaties organization and took on the role he has played many times in the past, rabble rouser and political activist. I grew up in my house. My mom and dad told me, first, honor your word, keep your word. Second, clean up your mess. Young passed up on an opportunity to meet with oil executives in Calgary, but one First Nations leader, Chief Clarence Louie of the Osoyoos BC Band, says it's in everyone's best interest to sit down and negotiate. Louis says the poverty facing First Nations in Canada can't be cured without money and jobs. And during a telephone interview with me, he told me, nobody works for free. They all get paid. Sometimes when I see David Suzuki, I got nothing against David Suzuki. I think he's done wonderful work, but I don't think David Suzuki or even Neil Young are working for free. I think they're middle class. Can, uh, and when I asked Neil to get more specific about the money his tour was generating, he fell back on this chestnut. What was the part of your question? I easily get, you know, because I'm a songwriter. Right? Yeah. By all accounts, his performance was a good one, especially when pressed about the tour buses idling out front of the concert hall during the press conference, and whether or not he uses private jets in his business and professional life. I do cl fly on private jets. Sometimes I even brush shoulders with the oil executives in those terminals. He even says he hopes he can erase the damage done by his carbon footprint. But his high-octane rhetoric ignores the fact that we don't have a replacement for fossil fuel at this point, and likely won't in our lifetime. His own skills in the music industry has afforded Neil Young wealth and influence. He's using it to undermine Canada and Canadian workers. The oil sands have created jobs and investment for Alberta's north, including the Athabasca Chippewan First Nations. We do need it. But we also need a good, clean environment, too. Nowhere on the Honor the Treaties website does it talk about the estimated $45 billion in federal taxes generated by the oil sands between now and 2035, or what would replace that revenue if the oil sands were shut down. Because now we're all talking about this. No one was talking about it before, so it's a win for us, because we're all talking about it. No matter how you feel, there's a discussion going on at the breakfast table. That's big. That's real. That's, can that's Canada. I'm Rob Gibson. This has been a Sun News special report.